Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and I've got another sort of tutorial here for you. Um, basically, we checked out the 3D projection already, and it was a pretty simple example. Um, I'm going to kind of take it a step further with this example of um, sort of a four wall area, and uh, I'm not going to be going really, really slow like in the previous tutorial, so hopefully you can pick up the essential techniques from part one and maybe learn some more advanced things from this tutorial, but not that much advanced. I mean, what do I know? But what we're going to do is uh, let's just set all this up. So we have a picture of our wall and uh, we'll just call this um, reference. By the way, if you hit return um, on the keyboard, you can retype um, the layer's name. So that's our reference again and we'll call it um, projected. So this way you can at least kind of follow what's going on so and sorry I uh, I started feeling better yesterday after that bee attack and must have had a relapse or something because I was up and I was you know I was really hungry and I wanted some honey and some brown sugar um, yeah so pretty awkward and I also I feel strange like like I have superpowers Whew. anyway we're gonna create a new solid we'll make it white and this is our projected image, comp size. And we'll just make one this time. And we'll add our grid effect. And we'll make it a little bit thicker. And that should be, uh, that should be good. And we'll make it 3D. We'll make our projected image 3D. And I'm a little out of order, but I'm just trying to go as we go. Now let's make that new light, point light, cast shadows, 100% darkness good and our camera 35 millimeter and all right so first thing let's link all the positions up for the camera the light and the projected image so I'm going to copy the camera's position control C control V paste it to the light control V paste it to the projected image now simple trick once it's copied just move it forward by uh, moving the Z axis. So just slide this and you can move it forward. You don't have to go into another view. Just wanted to illustrate that uh, previously. So then we can scale it down um, as needed. Scale it down, make it match up with the previous state. All right, that looks good. And let's go set up all the layer properties. So the projected image has to have light transmission on. And it only casts shadows. Good. Now the white layer, or the image that's going to receive the projection, we want it to accept lights off. And uh, that's, that's good. That's where we're at. So now what we want to do is take the projected image and shut it off. And that way we can see the grid while we work here. So we'll call this, you know, walls. And what we'll do is take the rotation tool and rotate to our floor. Now, don't think about changing the world to match your walls, but just think about the shape of the world. It's a box. I mean, don't worry about the ratio of the box to the world or to the camera. Just think about the box. So let's make a box. So I'm going to move this down. I mean, feel free to get it kind of close, but just for illustrated purposes. And then we'll duplicate the wall. We'll rotate it on the green Y axis. We'll move it over. And then we'll move this up. Whoops. And then uh, we'll duplicate it. Move it over here. And then let's select all three of the layers. And if we grab one of these corners here, we can stretch it out. There we go. That's looking pretty good so far. Now, our side walls aren't quite tall enough. So let's take our two side walls and let's stretch them upwards. And then we can also move them upwards. Now remember, um, it doesn't matter if the um, sides overlap. It's kind of hard to see here, but you see how my sidewall passes down past my floor layer? That's okay. Um, you know, if you want to keep everything neat, you can move it up. 
but if it overlaps a little bit, not going to be a problem. Then we'll take uh, the bottom floor here and duplicate it, move it up. Let's reset the scale. And then uh, let me reset this grid back to what I had it. And what we'll do is we'll rotate it towards the camera like a back wall. And remember, things that are so far away, we don't ever get to kind of see around them. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, just a flat wall. We don't have to worry about all the detail. But if you hold down Shift while you move this back, you can uh, push it all the way back there. We're going to go to the top view. And uh, we're just going to line this up with the back of the wall. So I'm just holding down Shift and uh, using the up arrow key. Active camera. Okay, so that's our wall back there. Now we can enlarge it. And uh, it looks like it's overlapping, but remember, it's not. And if you hold down Shift, you can move things a lot easier in 3D space. So we just basically want to fill the space so that anything that doesn't get caught by the walls or the floor will get caught by this background um, uh, layer. Right. The, gosh, I'm losing it here. The B instincts are starting to take over. Um, <laughs> all right, now if we turn the projected image back on, the reference picture off, and we turn the grid effect off, we're sort of right where we started. Now, if we're crafty enough, we go into the composition settings, change the options in the advanced to, uh, we'll change it to 3000 just for the sake of uh, rendering time here, and uh, resolution to half, so it's uh, not killing me. And uh, aren't you guys excited about the next step? I purposely did not show you what we were going to be creating in the beginning of the tutorial because I wanted to surprise you with the final results. So here we are, and uh, I'm going to show you what this means right now, like in a second. I'm going to take the Track Z camera tool, and uh, are you guys ready? Uh, we could try to go to full res. Half res? Now we'll go to full res. Okay, you guys ready? Oh, real quick, though, I want to tell you about something. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Watch this. Pretty wild. Let's go to, uh, just for the sake of making this quicker, bring the resolution down. And you can see uh, we can we can scale this room pretty decently. Um, you know, I saw some people were wondering, like, what could this be used for? Well, you know, for depth, for one thing. Um, if I were to move my camera down closer to the floor, um, you know, and look upwards, let's see. Now, we don't have anything up there, but we could obviously put a sky up there or something and maybe... You create a cool looking like look up and have the right perspective and not just like have a picture, you know, moving up or down, you know, like position wise, because that always looks hokey. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can move the position of the camera and create some much more dynamic looking moves, um, you know, all within the confines of this picture. So, I mean, you can see, uh, you know, the more detail you put into it, the more you can get out of it. Um, well, I hope this was as impressive as I, I thought it was. But you know me, I'm easily impressed. In fact, the, the other day I bought a, uh, what is it, a 12-pack? No, wait, it's a 24-pack of sodas. And they come in this little square, rectangular box. You put it in the fridge, and you kind of rip the front off of it. And what happens is the sodas roll forward. So if you take one out, they roll forward. So there's always a soda there waiting for you to drink. Take one out. So, I mean, I was a little skeptical at first, you know, because how could this mechanism really work so well? So, needless to say, I pulled all 24 of them out there to make sure each one would, uh, you know, follow suit and come out. All right, guys. Um, this is Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net. Um, of course, you can come support this site. Go check out our purchase page or our products page. Buy a cool DVD. Um, I recommend it, you know, and tell your friends because, uh, yeah. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.